What's up, Mir here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert um, BSP brushes or as they are called now, geometry brushes into static meshes. This is pretty useful if you want to export them into your 3D modeling application or if you want to keep them in your level, but uh, want to have them as a static meshes since static meshes are more optimal way of working. And uh, we're going to go in into few examples, I have uh, two box brushes that um, one is we are going to convert it right away. With this brush, we are going to apply uh, two different materials, see what happens then when we convert it. Uh, this brush is uh, actually comprised out of few brushes. If I disable the grouping, you can see that we have uh, one subtractive, second subtractive brush, and this one is additive. And I'm going to re-enable the grouping so to um if you haven't watched the previous video videos when uh, we created this you enable disable grouping by pressing ctrl uh, shift and then g and to group you press g and to ungroup you press uh, shift g so that's that and we have uh, this one which we also created in previous videos this one is made with a pen tool, so compared to this one is way better. But it also we have more controls with uh, this one. We would have to draw uh, lots more faces if we wanted to get some result like... Uh, let's have them... Let's select this brush, cylindrical brush, and maybe you wanted to do this have it. Mm. I guess I moved the brush a bit. Okay, so maybe you wanted to have something like we have here, and maybe with uh, I don't know, forty. Let's let's have them uh, be a bit different uh, in preparation, I guess. Um, and uh, for this one, I also want to have um, just one material. So I'm going to shift B and material then shift b and material so this whole thing if i re-enable the grouping should have just one material so if you're following along with me do that actually uh, yep hmm. i guess i'm going to disable the groups and add materials to here I didn't do that. Okay, so the preparation is done. You know what we are doing, so let's start. With this brush, I'm just going to select. You have to select the whole brush either by Control Shift clicking and then selecting the whole brush, or you click on the edge. And uh, this might be hidden, so show advanced and create static mesh. It's that simple, guys. And you can. Um, I'm going to name it sm test one you can name it whatever you want um, the standard for naming static meshes is sm but it's a bit overkill for tutorial but i did it anyway so when you click create uh, this is uh, a static mesh it's gotten converted so uh, you get uh, different options so one uh, thing with static meshes first of all you can export them uh, to um, your 3D modeling application, so you can uh, right-click, asset action, export, and export it is uh, FBX. If you know how to use some 3D modeling application, or you want to hand it over to your mate who is doing the modeling, and you made a reference for him to use with uh, BSP brushes, or uh, the other thing that's kind of uh, interesting when you convert them, uh, the static meshes are way better in uh, performance and also with building lights you get more controls and um, generally you want to have just static meshes as we talked uh, in uh, previous videos. And for this one I want to do something different but before we do that I want to point out even more things. If we hit play and bump into this one, we cannot go through, but we can go through this one, which sucks. So let's fix that before we move on. 
So, uh, find your static mesh and open it and then show collisions, show simple collisions. You have uh, complex collisions always because that's made from uh, actual vertices of your 3D model. But if you show collisions, add collision. Uh, and for this example, we are going to add the box collision and call it a day for uh, this mesh. I'm going to show you a bit more advanced collisions on the next meshes. But before we do that, let me show you uh, what you should do with materials. So let's say um, that you have a starter content in your project. If you do not have, you can use any materials that you have in your project. So I'm using content examples project from Unreal Learn tab, as I did in previous videos. And plus, I have starter content. So I'm going to select starter content and then just filter the materials because I'm lazy to click on this folder. <laughs> That would be usually useful if you go to the whole project and then filter it that way. So let's say this surface um, is our outer wall. So let's say it's going to use this brick material. And this, then uh, this inside surface, actually, like, uh, since we are there, let's apply it to whole thing. So I want to have just two materials. I have uh, the same material on the edges. And let's say this is our inside wall and we want to have this wall materials. So this would be awesome if you're building a house and you want to have on one side of the wall one material and uh, second material on the other side. So there is one problem with this. If we convert it right away, we do not have any control after the fact uh, on uh, tiling this material. I kind of lied there. We have control, but we have to dive into materials and set up tiling. And it's uh, more optimal to actually tile your materials inside your UVs. And uh, if you do not know what UVs is, are, you should Google them, but uh, that is a way to map uh, a texture to 3D object. And um, it's kind of out of scope of this video, to be honest, if... Uh, you do not know what there are, there are just Google. And we'll cover that in uh, future videos. So what we want to do before we convert, convert this uh, is tile it. And I did show this uh, in uh, previous videos. So I'm going to tile it two times and apply. And I get this wall material, which is awesome. Now let's uh, click on the edge and select it and convert it to static mesh. And this is going to be... It really sucks that it doesn't show me other stuff um, that uh, way I could um, grab the name, which I will do now. I just selected that and uh, copied it in clipboard for the next mesh so I don't have to type. I'm really lazy when it comes to typing. And uh, as you can see, this worked uh, perfectly. So it's a static mesh now. Uh, we have one material on one side, other material on the different side and we open it. Yep, it worked. And we still are missing collision like in previous ones. So add the box collision and that will work just fine. However, you get, I don't know why we got this third material. That's a bit weird. Oh, now I see it. <laughs> we didn't apply the whole mesh. Mm, doesn't matter, but we, you get the point. Tile your materials before you convert them. And uh, let's uh, convert uh, this brush actually first, since it's kind of a bit simpler. And for this one, we also have to fix this issue before we convert it, because it's going to persist uh, if we convert it to a static mesh. So to fix this, I also showed this in uh, previous videos, but if you kind of stumble upon this video and uh, just wondering how to convert static meshes, then here is something that you should do before you convert it. So select all faces by selecting one of them and then uh, Shift V to select all, fa all faces. Did it select the bottom face? Uh, hmm. Maybe it didn't. That happened with that wall. That's why I'm kind of being careful here and when you select all the faces you go to alignment and planar and you get a pretty nice result and then uh, just um, 
a matter of selecting the edge or the other way to select it, you know, and uh, creating a static mesh. And I'm going to be lazy and control V and this is a uh, third test. Okay. And uh, this mesh is pretty good. Um, we got the near perfect uh, light map UVs and uh, the first channel is just mapped as uh, for a material and it's just planar mapped uh, to all surfaces. So nothing to see here. And the second one, uh, just kind of remember what happened because uh, when I convert the other mesh, you will see what will happen. So uh, this mesh, if uh, somebody showed me this UVs, I would say it's perfect mm, in terms of surfaces, how they are uh, mapped. So uh, if you don't know what UVs are, like I said, uh, Google and uh, we'll cover it in um, in some future video when I do either a Blender tutorial or preparation uh, preparing assets for Unreal, just uh, how to prepare light map UVs for um, Unreal. But basically, this is used for uh, storing light map uh, information. So when you build lights, it stores uh, shadow and light information into this map. And we have to deal with a collision, guys. So collision, simple collision, nothing to see here. <laughs> While you could go at the box uh, that want to really work for us, uh, you could uh, go into transforms and maybe I'm going to turn off uh, this for now. And you could do something like this and scale it up and put one there, then press Alt and put one there, then press Alt and rotate it 90 degrees and pull it up and then maybe pull it a bit down and scale it up a bit. Mm, this is not really a way to do it since that, that's the only thing that we learned so far, but as you can see, it works. We go go through it and yeah, it works, but it's not 100%, as you can see. It looks like I moved that uh, one of the boxes or something. So what uh, you should do is uh, remove uh, those collisions. So collision to remove collisions and that should remove all of them. And then you should do auto convex collision. Now, depending on uh, what uh, settings you set, this might take uh, some time to do. And this is increasing this precision should give you better results. And you can also set up how many vertices you max vertices you want to have. I won't really mess with them that much. I'm just going to hit apply and. Um, you got something that's okay -ish, I guess. Um, the bottom part is okay, but if your character were to jump or uh, your character was a drone or something, it would get stuck on this collision. So that's totally up to you if you want to bump up this stuff or if you want to make it perfect, you're best off exporting to your 3D modeling application and making collisions there. That's totally out of scope of this video and something that I will cover in some other video. And if we save this, you can see... Actually, why isn't this working? Okay, we have collisions. Yes, we have. And we can go through the middle part. Yep, awesome. Let's drop it down and let's deal with this one. So if you have your brushes grouped, uh, you will um, you have to select the actual brush, not uh, the surface. But if you have them grouped, uh, it's kind of easy to select. And that's something we did in a previous video. Uh, just select all the brushes and press uh, Ctrl G. Or, um, and to disable grouping, you press Ctrl Shift G and just disable that. As you can see, disables all my groups. And uh, let's actually convert this. So I will click Create Static Mesh. And this is going to be 
is it uh, four? Yes. So if we open uh, th this example, here is what we have. It looks pretty okay, but we also don't have collisions. So we would go with uh, just generating it pretty quickly. So it took a bit longer for this one since we have this arc, which is a bit more complex. And if we go into this channel, nothing to see much here. But if we go into second channel, as I said, um, this is way better. Uh, the less faces you have in your light map, you uh, is the better. So like having these small pieces that are angled in different directions and that's not going to store light uh, information that well. So this is way better. This is really, really bad. But if you are to export this into 3D modeling application, it's not that big of a deal to fix it. And if you bump up the resolution high enough, uh, you might get some okay results even with this kind of light map. But I, as I said, I sh you should avoid this kind of stuff if you are making your own 3D models. It's kind of out of scope of this video, but uh, I hope that you learned how to convert static mesh, uh, convert BSP brushes into static meshes. If you have some questions, or not sure how to do something, um, feel free to ask in the comments. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel, you know what to do, and see you in the next one.